I've been flying single engine piston aircraft most of my adult life, but I recently got to fly in the cockpit of a jet and this was nothing like it. It was unbelievable, you guys. My dad recently upgraded into the Citation M2. He was flying a TBM for a while. You might've seen him on this channel. Uh, but after decades and decades of hard work and always dreaming about being able to fly a jet, he finally accomplished that. I'm really proud of him. He went to you know type rating school and everything and, and got all checked out. So once he did, we got to take a flight and it, it was just one of the coolest experiences. And so I wanna tell you about it here. My, my first impressions getting in the cockpit were, were just the amount of avionics available to you are, are quite incredible. And I thought it was kind of funny that I, I felt like a, honestly, I kind of felt like a poser sitting in the cockpit, um, sitting in the co-pilot seat and, and thinking, oh, I've got my own set of displays over here. I've got, you know, primary flight display and, and Cessna, that's cute, Cessna, that you think that I should have those or that I'll need them. I know co-pilots can do, you know, a lot of work or sometimes all of the work, but it was just funny to me. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just kind of here for the ride, uh, but I guess I get all this stuff too, which kind of made me feel uh, a sense of belonging, which was funny, but cockpit was super, super cool. You get to the startup sequence. The startup w was really, really neat. I was surprised by how automated it is. And these new jets, I mean, you go through all of the checklist items and, and everything, but once it's time to hit start, you literally hit start, and then you just wait, you kind of monitor things as it spools up. But it was a really, really cool sound and feeling just hearing the you know, kind of the whistle behind you knowing, oh man, there's something really cool happening outside. But yet it was so quiet. It was so quiet up front and it was cool to know like, hey, outside is making a lot of noise and it's blowing a lot of wind out the back. So you start one, you start two, uh, and all of a sudden you're sitting there and you wouldn't really even know the engines were started, but outside it's, you know, it's going crazy and everything. But inside you're, you're sitting and you're sitting happy and uh, life's good and the airplane's ready to go. So the startup sequence well, was pretty neat. Go to taxi. Now this is one of the coolest memories I have uh, so far uh, of aviation, which might, you know, might sound weird. It's like, dude, taxiing is one of your favorite things. Yeah, but I got to taxi the jet and it was like driving a city bus compared to the 182 or the Super Cub that I'm used to. And it was so, so cool to have the set of throttles in your hand. And, and I, I don't have very big hands. It took my whole hand to really grasp both uh, throttle levers and stuff. And so it doesn't take much at all to get the thing going. It's got so, so much power. And so it was such a cool feeling in my left hand just to kind of gently not nudge the throttles up to kind of get going and everything. And then when you do that, there's kind of the spool up time. So it's not, it's not instant thrust. And so, you know, you, you'll you'll kind of push it up and then you hear it hear it wind up behind you I, maybe you have to be there but that was just so so cool to me to think wow like in this hand the amount of power that i have right now so even the taxing honestly was super fun so now the takeoff i was already having a blast on the ground takeoff is where things got really interesting you know you go to take off power uh, on the throttle levers and then you release the brakes and you definitely get the hey i got shot back in my seat kind of feeling, which is just really good to know how much power you have behind you. But then I was really impressed by the speed at which everything occurred uh, after that point. And so when my dad was explaining to me what's about to happen and when, when he was kind of getting excited telling me about what it's like to fly a jet, Honestly, I thought he was exaggerating this part of the process. He's like, you'll just, you know, be blown away by how fast everything happens. And I was like, dad, you're a good storyteller, but I, I you know, I think you're doing some of this for effect. And I told him afterwards, I said, dad, I'm sorry I ever doubted you. You weren't lying about this. And so as you're just smoking down the runway and you're accelerating and accelerating, then you're calling out airspeed alive, uh, you know, meaning we have an airspeed indication. And then before you know it, you're calling out V1, which means even if we lose one engine, we're still flying. And then it's rotation speed. So you're pulling back on the yoke and you're taking off. And then before you know it, you have a positive rate of climb and you raise the gear. And all of those things happen like, like a second apart, it, it seems like. And so before you know it, you know, you had just put in takeoff power and then all of a sudden your gear is up and you are climbing and accelerating, which is a really weird thing. In the SESTA, I'm not climbing and accelerating at the same time, but in the Citation we were. And so before you know it, you're climbing through 2000 feet and you are just gone. And uh, I, I really just felt like I left my entire brain on the runway and I thought, gosh, we're climbing through a few thousand feet now. If I were in my airplane, like we'd be maybe over the departing end of the runway by now and life's good and we're still kind of looking around and stuff. But in the jet, you were transitioning into departure mode and you were just out of there. So the speed was just a really, really big transition. 
So once we got to cruise, a couple things stuck out. First of all, we were at flight level 410, meaning we were at 41,000 feet. So the airliners were, most of them were below us, which is kind of weird to, to look down and see 737 passing you and stuff. So that was kind of a weird sensation. But they also, a lot of them had smoke contrails behind them. So, you know, meaning we, we probably had those too. And so my dad and I joked, it'd be cool to pull a 360 just to see what kind of trail we're leaving in the sky. Something just really neat about thinking, man, normally I'm, I'm flying something way different than this. And now I'm up here in the jet environment with you know with the airliners and and, and I feel like a poser but I'm really thankful to be here and, and it was just a really interesting um, interesting blend of those two things the other thing that really stuck out was how far ahead you have to plan for things now as a pilot it's, it's really good to plan ahead regardless of what airplane you're flying but in the jet uh, you're, you're getting ahead of the airplane like four to five times more than you would in a 182. So if we're a couple hundred miles out from the destination in the jet, you know, things are going to get busy very quickly and we got to start planning for the arrival and, and doing some different things. If you're in the Cessna, I mean, get out of book. <laughs> you have a lot of time before uh, really anything happens. And so you always want to stay ahead, but, but the, the amount of time, uh, lead time that you need in the jet it, it is pretty big, you know, even hundreds of miles out. So crews, we weren't up there for very long before we we're already transitioning to thinking about the descent and the arrival. So it was fun, but it was short-lived. One thing that stuck out to me during the arrival phase was speed limits. Now on the 182, honestly, I kind of forget that speed limits exist sometimes because I'm nowhere near breaking them and it's just full throttle the whole way. But in the jet, that's not the case. And so as we were descending through 10,000 feet, we had to be at 250 knots or less on the indicated airspeed. And if you're not careful, you will blow right through that. You've got so much power and the airplane is actually kind of hard to slow down. It's so aerodynamic and you don't have a ton of drag out there by design. You know, in the piston aircraft, you, that propeller actually serves as a pretty good brake. There's a lot of drag having that, you know, huge propeller out front. The jet doesn't have that. And so, you know, you can almost be at idle and, and you're trying to descend and it can be difficult to slow the airplane down. Um, so you really have to be uh, thoughtful about airspeed control. That was a new thing to me. Um, never really worried about breaking speed limits, but in the jet we were. And because we were going 250 knots, keep in mind, things are happening at twice the speed, if not, if not more than that, than I'm used to in the 182, which two times speed is a lot. If that doesn't sound like a lot, go watch this video on two times speed or start listening to the podcast on two times speed. It's awesome, but I mean, it's, it's a significant jump. And so uh, I, I think I underappreciated how much quicker um, things were happening. And so if you're 30 miles from the airport in the 182, you still got some time. In the jet, you're going to be there in an instant. And so uh, kind of a common theme here of really, really having to be ahead of the airplane. So landing was really cool. Honestly, I was kind of thinking, hey, we're going pretty fast here, but we weren't. We were going the, the correct airspeed, but you're still going like twice the airspeed that I'm used to in my 182, which felt really, really fast. But you gained a better appreciation for how fast you were going a few minutes ago when you're going 400 knots in cruise, because 120 knots or so feels fast over the ground when you're, when you're landing, uh, but we were going more than three times that a few minutes ago. So that was a really cool thing. But one really neat thing that happened uh, when we were taxiing in was that ground control had another airplane hold short on some taxiway for the jet and then uh we and i kind of looked at each other, oh I, I guess we're i guess we're the jet and not like in a pretentious way but just in a hey i've never i've never experienced this before kind of way it was really neat to think oh yeah i guess i guess we're the jet taxiing by and it's so quiet in the cockpit but you know you're making a ton of noise out on the ramp like that was just i don't know just cool to be in, in big powerful machines so the the flight was not what i expected really for two reasons the first is that while I obviously expected the jet to be a lot faster than the 182, duh, I, I didn't expect it to be such a quantum leap and, and just the amount uh, of overwhelm that I, that I felt and, and just thinking, oh my gosh, this is not just faster. This is a whole nother breed. This is a whole nother animal. Uh, that, that was really interesting to me in, in, the, in the funnest way possible. But the second really interesting component about that was that it, even though it was a quantum leap, totally different airplane, it was oddly familiar in the same way because the same principles uh, of the 182 to still apply the same flight principles, the same ATC calls, the same airspace, the same approaches. It's all the same stuff. So it was this crazy net new experience, but oddly familiar at the same time. And because of those two combination of those two juxtaposed things, um, nice use of the word juxtaposed. Uh, I thought it was uh, just a tremendous experience and you can go watch it right now. I've got the full video up in the corner. So come fly with us. I'll see you in that video.